the duration of my final semester studying graphic design, I have focused on motion within design, looking at how motion can be shown in both static and animated design. To explore this idea, I have created two projects based on self-initiated briefs, one focusing on the periodic table and the elements within it, and the second being based on sports, using the upcoming 2024 Olympics as a focal point. This work was supported by researching artists and designers who highlighted motion within their own design, namely DIA Studios, M Masaki Hiroma, Kota Iguchi and Tom Pidgeon. When initially starting my first project this semester based on the idea of creating motion work inspired by the elements on the periodic table, I immediately wanted to aim to create type-based pieces which replicated the properties of the elements that I had chose to create work about, and so spent time researching each of them. I went on to begin creating animated pieces which aimed to do this, however, after some time reflecting on the results of this, I found that they looked crude, overcomplicated, and didn't reflect the scientific aesthetic which I sought after. At this point, I referred back to the work of DIA Studios, who have a range of kinetic motion projects which really highlight the aesthetic I aspired to achieve with this first project. Chiefly looking at the rebranded identity they did for Colours and the Kids, as well as the identity for Space 10, I quickly realised how less is more, especially in the case of these projects which had the kind of aesthetic I desired for my own, which I aim to give the viewer the perception of clean, structured and thought out work. Particularly when looking at DIA's Colours and the Kid reband, I could see how simple, minimalistic use of type, image and movement really furthered the work and couldn't uh, feed into my own project. In order to attain a similar aesthetic that was just as impactful, at this point I returned to my own work creating many different digital pieces using the ethos that less is more in order to attain a similar result to the work I had been referencing. Whilst the whole time bearing in mind the fact I wanted to rise or print the digital pieces, it was from this referencing of DIA Studios work and continued development that I finally settled on a format for the composition and style of the pieces that really resonated with me, which included a minimal representation of each of the elements' electron configurations, as well as the name, atomic number and mass. This led to some really striking pieces of static design which highlighted an implied motion within them using quite minimalistic ideas such as repetition. It was from this basis of digital and printed designs that I was able to start working on animated ones which used ideas that inspired me from DIA's Colours and the Kid and Space 10 identities aiming to mimic the simplistic yet effective style of motion which really made these works stand out to me, especially in relation to this project. The first thing I set out to do was animate each of the electron configuration models I had made in order to show the fashion in which they moved. As for each of the animated pieces, they would sit in the background and provide the basis for the compositions. I then aimed to play with minimalistic motion techniques on each of the typography aspects of the pieces, aiming to manipulate them in a uniform and structured manner to reflect the structure within each of the elements. I have found the results of the project to be really engaging and intriguing, particularly the riso printed and animated pieces which highlighted how motion in design can be used in both static and moving pieces. Once I had spent time in the semester getting my first project completed to a point that I was comfortable with, I then moved on to my second self-initiated brief, which was based around creating a set of posters, designs and animations for the upcoming 2024 Olympics in Paris, with heavy focus still being on showing motion within design. I began this work with a much clearer idea on how to structure the project. Firstly spending time researching both artists' work to base it off, as well as the actual games themselves, finding out about the sports included, the existing brand identity, including logos, fonts and colour schemes. 
This research then gave me a firm basis for my project, putting me in good stead for the remainder of the project. It was this initial research stage of the project that I found the work of Tom Pigeon, which is the pen name for designer Kirsty Thomas, whom has collaborated with clients such as the Barbican, Tate Modern, V and Day, and Team GB, to name a few. Originally drawn to the work for its minimal and quite abstract style that seems to be a staple within the works, it was actually one project in particular that sold me on the designer, the prints made for Team GB. They feature very minimalist impressions of the sports they are displaying, yet each one shows so much dynamic movement in a very static medium. These prints inspired me to explore the same kind of ideas within my project, aiming to keep quite simple designs that showed the motion within each sport that I had researched for the project. I began the process by creating simple digital illustrations that aimed to highlight each of the specific sports in a clear but minimal manner. I then began to further tweak these developments to reduce and minimalise them, aiming to find a way in which I could show motion within a static image. Finally landing on the idea of using various stroke thicknesses and line shapes to do this, which seemed to be the most effective way of doing so in a static form. Once I had the basis for these designs, I then built them into a poster that could be used for digital and print. I found the resultant works to be really intriguing, although the Rhizo printed outcomes were by far my favourite due to the slight imperfections in the prints and ink which gave the pieces much more character. I personally wish I had spent more time working on these pieces though, perhaps using the A2 printer to try and get the correct colours for the posters, as certain colours like the orange and the yellow were the wrong shade when printed. <clears throat> After working upon the printed and digital outcomes for this project, I then looked at how I could animate these posters in order to show the motion of the sports in a moving format. To do this, I looked at the designers Masaki Hiruma and Kota Aguchi, whom both worked on the first ever animated pictograms for Tokyo 2020 Olympics. These animations became a big inspiration for my own work, as they encompassed all the ideas of my digital, digital and printed work in an animated format, highlighting the motion within each sport in a fluid manner. This led me to creating animated pieces of work that were inspired by both my digital and printed pieces, as well as Hiromura and Aguchi's work. I particularly liked the resultant animations as it was something I had never done before, and challenged me to broaden my skill set when using After Effects. As well as this, it left me with some really striking work which showed how dynamic the movement could be within animation, even when kept minimal. However, I did find that I was unable to get some of the animations refined to how I wanted, as I couldn't reopen some files to edit them once they had been saved. If I had more time in the semester, I would have liked to revisit these animations and figure out how to fine-tune them further. To summarise, I have found the past year of study to be really pivotal to developing me as a designer and artist, particularly in the last semester when I have really had time to explore motion design further and develop my skills in something which I thought up until this year wasn't a valid option for me. I have found that the projects I have showcased in this essay have really furthered myself and prepared me for a career working in this industry.